Hi, this is Doc Mountain and I welcome you to my channel. In our video today, I'm going to focus on decay curves. So by the end of this video, you should know what a decay curve is and you need to have, you need to walk away with the knowledge on how to interpret the decay curve and calculate whatever you've been asked to calculate. So now if you're writing grade 12 exams and that you intend to write physics, then you need to know that you're going to encounter a question on decay curves. So if you're one of those people who are writing grade 12 exams this year in physics, then I urge you to watch this video to the end. Okay, so what's the decay curve? A decay curve is a curve obtained when a graph of mass or count rate activity in a radioactive substance is plotted against that. So now what I'm saying is if you have time and then you also have been given the, the mass of that particular substance, which is radioactive, and then you're told the half-life of that substance is this much or that much, which we are, look, we are going to look at as we begin to look at examples. Then when you plot those two quantities, that is the mass, let's say you have mass, and then this mass is actually plotted on the y-axis, okay, the y-axis, and then time that it takes for that mass of that particular object to, or that particular substance to, to decay is actually plotted against the x-axis. When you plot this, obviously you will come up with a curve because you have those points and then you need to plot them and they'll give you a curve. Now this curve that you're going to come up with is what we call the decay curve. Okay, so now what I'm saying is time corresponding to half the life of the original count gives the half life of radioactive substance. If let's say if let's say the original mass of this substance under consideration is somewhere here, which is maybe a 400 grams. Let me do this. We say this is 400 grams. Okay, that's uh, 400 grams. That's it. That's its original mass. Okay, so that's the mass that we start with, 400 grams. So now what it is, is if this mass now decays down from 400, it comes down to, if let's say, uh, half of it, half of 400 is actually a 200, okay? It's a 200. So now from 400, we have 200 grams. So now what it is, is you have to check, you have to check from this point, okay, from this point where the mass is half, and then you check, you you actually draw a line which will touch the curve and then where it hits the curve you happen to project it downwards till it touches the the time graph okay so now at that point where it touches the time graph let's say this is the half life and the half life is maybe that's just the time so for 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 200 grams of that particular substance actually decays away within let's say three days three days and we'll say the half-life of this substance is actually three days so now that's what they're saying the time corresponding to half the life of the original count rate gives the half-life 
of a, a radioactive substance. So now this is 200 grams, and it actually corresponds to three days on the graph. So we'll say this is actually the half-life of the radioactive substance under consideration. Let's, let's move on. Look at the major example. So we have this example here. It is past paper based. This actually came in 2019. This is a 2019 paper. Now they're saying figure 4.1 below shows the results of the experiment. And then the count rate per second is 2000. So it, th this is. This is the line which is showing the count rates of that particular radioactive substance. So now the starting count rate is 2000. Then from 2000, we go down to 1500. Then we go to 1000. Then we go to 500. Then it boils down to zero. And then this one is simply showing the count rate. Then the horizontal line at the bottom here is actually showing the time. So now the question is, what is the half-life of the substance? So now for you to determine the half-life, first of all, you need to determine the, the half count rate of the original count rate. So the original count rate is this one here, which is a 2000. So now we need to find half of that. So we say half, Half of 2,000 Okay, so now that one is, isn't pretty good But uh, I hope you're able to see that So half of 2,000, which is up there Is, is actually a 1,000 Okay, a 1,000 So when we find this answer here which is a 1,000, we will now need to check on our graph. Where is 1,000? 1, 1,000 is here. So the half, the half count, count rate of the substance is here. So we draw the line which touches the curve, and then where it touches the curve, we drop the line now to check the time at the bottom here. So now this actually takes us back to that point, which is saying that, Half-life of a substance corresponds with half mass or count rate of that particular substance. So now we pick the time here. What's the time? This is zero. And now time is in house, so you need to take note of the unit. So now we move from zero, then that's uh, 30 minutes. Then we go to one hour, then one hour, 30 minutes. Then we go to two hours, two hours, 30 minutes. That's a three hours. And then we go on and, 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 and on just doing the same thing. So now here, what we have is one hour, 30 minutes. Or we can, we can as well indicate this one to be 1.5. So the half-life of this particular substance or radioactive substance under consideration is one hour, 30 minutes. Or 1.5. Let's move on to the next example. Okay, so now in this example, they're saying fig, figure 9.1 shows a decay curve, a red on nuclide. So this vertical line is actually denoting the mass of radon. And then the, the horizontal line here at the bottom is showing time within which radon decays. And uh, that time is in days. So now we'll skip this one because this one is actually a subtopic ahead. Okay, so now we'll get to look at this one. Our focus is on decay diagram. So now let's do this. From the graph, determine the original mass of the nuclide. So the, the original mass is actually this one, which is on top here. Okay, so the original mass is 80. Now you check the units in which the mass is recorded. So that's in kgs. Okay, so 
they're asking what's the original mass of nuclide so we'll say it's actually 80 kgs uh, let's move on to number two they're saying from the graph determine the quantity of the nuclide that remained after six days so this time around you don't need to wake your brain it's like so what, what do i do next from here you simply come down here and check on the horizontal axis where six days is time here is recorded in days so six days is here so you draw a line and that one should be a dotted line which would touch the curve then from the curve project the line leftwards horizontally and make sure you use a rule and then you find that it will touch the vertical axis and the vertical axis is actually giving you the amount of red on that had remained after six days so that is 10 kg so here we can record to say well what i had remained of red on was actually 10 kgs after the decay process so that's 10 kg let's move on to the last question they're saying what's the half-life of the nuclide remember when i when i was actually telling you about when i actually started this lesson i was telling you to say half-life is actually the time which corresponds to half of the mass or the count rate of the radioactive substance under consideration so now in this case we have 80 the question is what's a half what's a half of the original mass okay this one is pretty simple but for the sake of those people we may just need to see what is really happening so we are doing this half of 80 as 2 into 8 that actually gives us a 4 and then 2 into 0 that's a 0 then here we're going to have a 1 then 1 times 40 that would be a 40 then 1 into 40 that's actually 40 so okay the half life okay so half of the original mass is actually 40 so it's here so now half life is the time which corresponds to half of the original mass or count rate of the radioactive substance under consideration so now we'll drop the line and y24 is actually the half-life of that substance so we check out it has fallen on a two and what is that two it's actually denoting the days so time here has been recorded in there so now the half-life of red dawn is actually two days well so friends that's how we go about these problems that have to do with decay diagrams thank you so much for watching stay blessed